Hello there, how are you? Welcome back to How I Did It. Well, this week's project was putting shocks on the front of my 2008 Jeep Wrangler. Now, I bought this thing brand new. It has 110,000 miles, and I hate to say it, but I have never put shocks on. So these shocks are the original with the Jeep. So the first thing I had to do was loosen up the lug nuts and because I don't have an impact driver um, I just used the lug wrench and stood on it, gave it a little bit of a bounce, got them loose and once I got them loose I used my floor jack that I have and I set it up so I could put this floor jack underneath or the jack stand underneath it. The scissor jack that came with my four wheel drive Jeep is basically useless. It doesn't give you enough height to actually change out the stock tires that came on this four-wheel drive Jeep. Isn't that crazy? So of course I had to jack it up with this stand that or the jack that is not appropriate. You can see the things basically almost a hundred percent extended. So I went ahead and got the jack stand under there. Then I used my little quarter inch drive drill and was able to just pull those lug nuts right off. Using leverage with my feet pushing up and then my hands, I just guided that wheel right off. Rolled it off to the side and put it underneath the Jeep just in case something hinky happened and the Jeep fell. It wouldn't fall all the way onto the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> went ahead and lowered it back down onto the jack stand yeah a little bit harsh on that lowering but now it was set up and safe that I could get in there and start loosening up this shock now I had to use the two wrench trick in order to get the um, nut loosened up and this is a nylon nut so it was pretty cool it wasn't like it was locked tight holding it and then I was able to just use the ratchet wrench to pull it off. Now the difference between my old shocks and my new shocks, the new shocks, you don't have to use a crescent wrench to hold the bottom of the uh, shock in place. You just hold it with your hand. Also, the new shocks are a metal housing where this original shock or the OEM shock is a plastic housing. I was... Uh, pretty surprised um, at the construction on it. The other thing is this was so long overdue. You can see when I do a close up here of uh, uh, just the rubbing and the wear on it. I should have gotten this done much sooner. So to get the bottom nut and bolt loosened up I actually had to use this breaker bar get myself underneath there to get some pretty good leverage on it and free it up. The nice part about it was the bolt didn't actually spin when I was loosening this nut up and the nut had Loctite on it and that's the only thing I kind of kicked myself that I didn't actually pick up Loctite to um, just have it on hand because here was the perfect example of needing it. So once I got it loosened up, it's just a matter of getting that bolt out of there. And then the shock will just swing right out of the bottom and then pivot out of the top and it's out. It really is a very easy project. Left the little strap on it that came uh, when I purchased the new one and then reversed the process put that bolt in at the bottom and put the nut back on it but don't tighten it down just yet go ahead and uh, get it set up with the new rubber bushings and these two washers now you'll notice what I was trying to show you there uh, one washer has a bigger hole in it than the other and the one with the bigger hole on it goes over the shaft, the thick part of the shaft of this shock. You have to pull it down and then put the other uh, rubber bushing on there and then the other cupped washer goes on top and then the little nylon nut goes back on it. It's, 
almost idiot proof only because of even like with those two metal washers the one will only fit on the bottom and the other one fits on the top then I went back through and tightened it down again I wish I would have had a little bit of Loctite for it here and I'm sure there's a torque specification you know at this point I wasn't so much concerned with um, the torque on it I just got this the wrench on it got it tightened down not film but I put the breaker burr on it and gave it one more crank that way it would basically be to the same thing as when I took it apart and then this is pretty neat so I used the ratcheting wrench to tighten down that nylon nut and you just hold the metal housing there on the shock to keep it from spinning around the other thing is this has a um, the rubber bushings there's one on top and one on bottom where the other one just went up through a little piece through the uh, top housing so there it's tightened down and now it's a matter of just putting the wheel back on again got the wheel over I use the leverage of my feet under each side of the wheel for the weight you know lift it up a little bit with your toes you line up the holes obviously and then boom on it goes go ahead and get all of your lug nuts on there get them tightened down by hand then you can use your quarter inch drive little miss Leah there you can see Stella in the background they're all like hey what are you doing <laughs> uh, Leah is one of the only one of Stella's puppies that has one blue eye and one brown eye I'm puppy sitting for her mom and dad while they're in Peru this week so once you get it tightened back down with that quarter inch drive you know you have to jack it up a little bit to get the jack stand out and then go ahead lower it down now I didn't put all the weight on it um, initially that way I could go ahead and get this torque down to 187 foot-pounds yeah my fat butt on it that's how I tightened it down <laughs> I used my fat butt to get it off. I'm going to use my butt to get it tightened back down on there so I don't have any issues with it coming off. But it's on the road. It's working great. And I want to thank you all for stopping by. Have an absolutely wonderful and blessed day. I'll see you next week on How I Did It.